Hey, what is going on guys and welcome back to another episode of Club and Country. This is episode number 31 and today we have three more games with St Johnston and a couple of big ones as well. We face Watford away from home at Vicarage Road first. Then we take on Arsenal in the round of 16 in the FA Cup. The draw just been made. I'll show you the full tournament tree on the screen right now. We'll be taking on Arsenal at McDermott Park for the round of 16 tie. So excited for that but also pessimistic about our chances of getting to the quarterfinals. And then we end today's episode with a home game against Norwich, another newly promoted side like us, at McDermott Park as well. So hopefully, back-to-back -back wins in the lead to come on the back of that disappointing, to say the least, 3-0 loss to Hull, and also progressing to the quarterfinals of the FA Cup as well. That's the plan. Let's see if we can do it. And as we get to the first game of the episode as well, away against relegation threat and Watford, I do want to say apologies for no videos yesterday. I was really, really sick. I woke up early in the morning from like a two-hour sleep after spending the night working on a new project for you guys this weekend and I woke up and I just felt so cold so shivering cold and I had to peg it to the bathroom really really quick Usain Bolt style to throw up chunks and chunks of vomit so yeah yesterday I was really really sick only just recovering really today but uh, hopefully you guys were okay with no videos yesterday so anyway uh, enough of that image let's get straight into the first game we take on Watford away at Vicarage Road two massive games for us today can't afford to lose them both let's win them both instead come on the Scots and once again, pre-game, I was reminded of the fact that this season we are the lowest scoring team in the Premier League still, with just 16 goals scored all season long, which is not good enough. We need to put the ball in the back of the net on a more regular basis. And I did say in the last episode, we don't want to get dragged into a relegation dogfight. The reason why today's episode is so important in these two games against Norwich and Watford are vital to us is because if we lose them both, they're only just a couple of points below us in the table right now. We will get into a relegation dogfight. We're still plenty to season left to go so come on St Johnston got to get it right today as Craig goes for goal from range and fires it just wide and I did say we weren't going to play as well as we did with Racing Santander in Spain and Paris FC in France in our first year in the top flight this one has been a lot more difficult no one's going to deny that but staying in the Premier League was my goal I did believe we could finish in mid table as well but right now I'll just take the former and call it a good debut year Patterson sends Maka down the right gets it back here down this right hand side and Maka is down and that is not what we want to see we've had so many injuries this season and Maka is getting forced off the pitch early and in an episode with three massive games, we're going to be without our most important player. And we can rely on McLaren at 57 overall to play alongside Hunter Kane's injured as well right now. Don't forget too. I mean, oh my goodness, it's all going wrong. Maka, Stevie boy, he's off. And oh my word, we are capitulating and the season is falling apart. Go on, too tight. You're born here. You're born here. Well done. We need some good defense now. Now Mac is off the pitch and just try and hold on to some nil nils. That's a good ball through the by Hunter towards McLaren. Is this the new dream strike duo? McLaren is through. It's a great save by Barisha, though. And we'll take the corner. That would have been an instant impact there. Second half begins, and I felt we played well in the first half, but still are deadlocked at nil-nil, and with Macker off the pitch as well. I mean, quite seriously, just real briefly to break away from the commentary, we have lost so many players in our first team due to injury this season. The skipper Murray Davidson, old man Barry, Macker now as well, Kane's in the sidelines too at the moment, Callum Patterson, Oliver Burke, pretty sure Craig was injured for a while as well, as Kapoor's strike goes just wide of the post, and we're about to tackle by Craig, and a chance on the break as he finds his man McLaren through towards Hunter. Don't really trust these two as a strike duo, but still maybe they'll prove us all wrong here Hunter on the ball does very well and rolls it through towards McLaren who's through one on one surely McLaren puts it into the back of the net Watford Nelson Johnston won and McLaren comes off the bench for Stevie Boy and fires us into a very unlikely need what need lead Watford Nelson Johnston won I said I didn't trust this strike duo brilliant work from Hunter puts him out on the floor rolls it through towards McLaren who does the rest what Nelson Johnston, come on! And there it is, final whistle at Vicarage Road, and what a massive victory for the boys from Perth. After the early setback to Macca, I didn't expect us to get anything from this game, but McLaren comes off the bench for his role model and puts the ball into the back of the net to win us the game and deliver a priceless three points. Good to see us get a clean sheet as well after shipping three at home to Hull in the last game, in the last episode. Massive, massive win this one. Huge three points. I want us to pull away from the drop zone and not get sucked into that dogfight. So big, big win there. Let's get another one against Arsenal and progress to the quarterfinals of the cup and then beat Norwich as well. Have three solid wins today. Let's do it.
But first of all, we're going to find out the extent of Maka's injury, and it is a nine-day one. He's bruised his shoulder and will be out for just over a week, and that's not a big blow for us either. He'll miss the Arsenal game, almost certainly, but should be able to make it back on time for the Norwich game. So that's a huge boost for us there. I was worried we'd have another long-term injury, another one this season after so many already, but fortunately, just a nine-day injury. We love Maka. He's one of our most important players. We can do a for the time being, though, because McLaren's in the team right now, and what a start for the young lad. All right, so moving swiftly on then to the second game of the episode, and it is the game against Arsenal in the FA Cup fifth round at home at McDermott Park. So a massive win there against Watford, but our last home game was that 3-0 defeat to bottom place Hull. So I'm not feeling too confident despite getting the win in the last game, but stranger things have happened, and we could pull off a huge surprise here. So come on, St. Johnston, let's be the giant killers of this round and get a massive victory over Arsenal and progress to the quarterfinals of the FA Cup for the first time. Let's get it done. Here's Callum Chambers for Arsenal down the right hand side. Fizzes one back towards Cazorla now inside towards Oxley Chamberlain inside the area. Back towards Santi and Logan Reed makes a good stop. Arsenal have started this game on top as you would expect. Clear favourites for this game there. Dominating possession and getting the early chances. Cazorla on the ball though is blocked by Hamilton but it falls kindly to Eldeny who flashes the shot wide. I don't want a replay. I do feel like Arsenal will score at some point though but we're holding our own for the time being and it is still 0-0. And the corner for St. Johnston, the chin strap takes it and looks for old man Barry Cockerland with a powerful header away though, finds Welbeck and he's just turned Tierney inside out and away goes the former United striker. It's a great chance here on the break, Cazorla on the ball, Suter has to try and get there, oh I took one for the team, trying to get the ball and that's Suter's game off, straight red card, definite right call from the referee. And Sutar is walking. I tried to nick the ball off Gazzola. He was always going to win in a foot race. And Sutar clipped the man. And he's off. And we're down to 10. I, I tried so hard to get the ball. But that little touch there took it away from our number 16. Red card. Free kick Arsenal. Definitely the right call. And we're down to 10. Well, it's going to be backs to the wall stuff now for the rest of the game. And we're only half an hour into the game as well. That was such a bad decision, but I thought, you know what? Because all is going to go through anyway. I may as well try and take the ball off him, because I'm sure he'd score. But unfortunately, he just took one extra touch. That took it away from Sutar's lunge, and the referee called it right. Still Burke on the ball, though. Feeds it inside towards Rob Hamilton here, who takes it around his man. And the ginger boy goes for goal and curls it just wide of the post. Corner to Arsenal just before the hour mark and we're still holding our own here at 0-0. But here's a good chance for them with Cazorla finding Ramsey fresh off the bench. Finds Elneny inside the area. Back towards Ramsey. Fakes it through towards Gabriel who's inside and chips it to the far post. Reed does enough but Danny Welbeck turns in the rebound. And the former Manchester United striker gives Arsenal the lead. And it was surely going to happen at some point. But I've got to be honest, since we've gone down to 10 men, they've barely done anything. Gabriel went across to the far post. Logan Reed possibly could have done better. It wasn't a shot, but he parried it straight into the path of Danny Welbeck. 1-0 to the Gunners. And unfortunately, I can't see us getting through now. It's kind of annoying too, because since going down to 10 men, we've actually played just as good as Arsenal. You know, seriously, we've had a couple of chances ourselves and had one really good one too, but it's still 1-0 to the Gunners. And now having that man advantage, I'm sure at some point they will add a second goal. Reed punches away the cross, but it'll drop kindly to Elneny. Reed still getting back to his line. Welbeck on the ball, trying to take it around Barry. He does, goes for goal into the side netting. That's a great reverse pass to Alexis Sanchez, who's away here. And the Chilean is one on with Barry Hamilton. And Barry tried to read it. Ramsey made a good strike, but Reed makes a good save. And Sonogo is tackled. Arsenal looking for the dagger here late on, but still just lead by one. As Hamilton receives the loose ball and finds Kieran Tierney. Come on, one late chance here to grab an equaliser. Davidson on the ball. Has Maka off the bench here, hobbling a little bit, but finds his man Murray through, get, uh, through, through inside here. Taken down. Referee, that's got to be a free kick. And Chambers has just been booked as well so Callum is off Callum Chambers sent off two yellow cards and with two minutes of normal time to play there's a chance for us possibly to send the game to a replay the ginger not over the free kick uh, Craig is there as well Craig so far scored the only free kick goal of the series is this the moment Liam Craig with a free kick to try and bend into the top corner if I can and I mean what on earth is that seriously I was really pumped, you know, like, I was really, really pumped there. I was like, come on, this is the moment. There's under 10 men like us and we can score. And obviously that free kick just goes into orbit. Like, free kicks in FIFA nowadays are just the most inconsistent thing because I just, I, I can never get it right. You know, I can never, ever get it right. And even when I think that I'm really consistent with the amount of power and, uh, and, and the placement I put it on it as well, it never seems to work out that way. Still, one final chance. Hamilton on the ball. Fred's inside towards Liam Craig. Still the moment. Craig inside the 
Chesney goes for goal. Chesney makes the save and turns him on for a corner. What a chance. And that will do it as well. The corner comes to nothing and Arsenal hold on for the win. They beat us by a goal to nil in an ill-tempered affair with two men getting sent off in the same game, one for each side. It is Arsenal who progressed to quarterfinals then. They were the favourites pre-game anyway, but unfortunately Welbeck's goal does confirm it. They're through, we're out. What a shame. Even though he went down to 10 men in the first half as well, I thought he played just as good as Arsenal in this game. And that's what really frustrates me too. He had chances in this one, none better than one right at the end as well. But unfortunately, just couldn't take them. That's been a theme of our problem this season, not scoring enough goals. 1-0 the final score, and we're out. Simple as that. Next season, we need a new striker. You know, simple as that. I mean, we, we can't cope with just putting the expectation on Macca's back time in, time out, because he's a good striker still. But of course, he's nowhere near as good as he was in the first season. And we need someone that's going to be a reliable goal scorer to put the ball in the back of the net on a regular basis. Otherwise, we're not going to make any progression. All right, so third and final game of the episode. Then we now host Norwich here at McDermott Park. They are just one point behind us in the table right now and a couple of places below us too. We cannot afford to keep losing our home games though. Now our, fast, uh, our last two games, I should say, at home have both been losses against Arsenal in the Cup and Hull as well. This is a big game for us here in Scotland and we need to get the three points. So come on, St. Johnston, let's get a big win here and get into the top half of the table. Oh, John Sutar suspended as well. Easton, a left back, is filling in at centre back just because he's six foot two, he's strong, he's got medium high work rates. He looks like he could play centre back as well as left back, even though it's not listed in his positions. And I've said this before, I really wish EA would let you train a player into a new position, even though it's kind of trivial because you can still play players wherever you want anyway and it's not going to affect their performance. It's just like, you know, it's, it's a little feature which will make the game look so much neater, I feel. Here's McLaren through towards Craig. Early chance here with a ginger nut on the ball. Coming inside, Rob Hamilton has space to shoot here. And he does, and he finds the back of the net as well. What a start for St. Johnston. Rob Hamilton firing us into an early lead. And the ginger boy puts us in front. Massive, massive goal in a massive game. St. Johnston won Norwich nil. What a brilliant start. We spread the play out wide, Rob Hamilton takes it around, not one but two yellow shirts, then fires the ball through the gap of the Norwich defender's arm and body into the back of the net. No chance for the English John Ruddy as the ginger boy gets his first goal of the season in the league, and I think that's his first goal for the club, or did he score last season in the championship? Not entirely sure, but one Nelson Johnson, that's all we care about. What a star. Naismith crosses the centre, finds Andre Silva, and Logan Reed makes a really good save. Well done. He's Olsen for Norris down left hand side, finds Robbie Brady back towards the number 38, finds Yusuf Malumbu inside towards his man, Stephen Naismith pokes it back inside, Logan Reed with a great save, but Seiss gets to the rebound and puts Norwich back on level terms, that's not how you say his name, it's probably Seiss or Seiss, I don't know, but Norwich have scored 1-1, and I've got to say, old man Barry decided not to jump for the header, or he did, but he just didn't get up, clearly, poor old man Barry, he's too old for that sort of thing. Thing. Needs a trampoline. Header by size into the back of the net. Logan Reed can't make a double save. Norwich score 1 1, and that is a really, really big blow for us going into the break. That was quite poor defending, i got to say, from old man Barry. And I've never actually said that about him. He's always been really good for us, but he should have done better there to shield his man, box out, if you will, basketball terms. And again, Norwich are through here, and Logan Reed makes a brilliant save. Side to a great ball through towards his man, Matt Jarvis. Barry comes across, but can't deny the cross. And Andre Silva turns in the cross to make me very cross. St. Johnston 1, Norwich 2. And we've just looked everywhere, but in the right positions at the back. The, the men, the, the, the defensive line has been so scattered, there's been no pattern to it. And Andre Silva makes it 2-1 to the Canaries. They've turned the game on its head. And if we do lose this one, it'll be three games on the trot where we lose at McDermott Park. The curse is well and truly back on. Norwich have dominated possession in this game as you see in the top left it's been so difficult for me to get the ball off them but maybe there's one late chance here of a good tackle and Burke finding Rob Hamilton here the ginger boy who scored our goal sends McLaren down the left here back inside towards Hamilton has Macca with him there's men over here Macca holds it up gives it towards Murray Davidson the captain who fires it into the back of the net to rescue us a point Murray Davidson with a huge goal and a season defining goal as well as he celebrates on the advertising 
surprising hoardings. 2-2. A massive, massive goal. And we're back on level terms. Come on. One extra pass. I knew we had men over there, so I held it up with Maka. Gave it towards Murray. I could have gave it to Burke if I wanted to. Instead, took the finish on myself. And Murray Davidson, with a minute of normal time to go, scores his first goal of the season. St. Johnston 2. Norwich 2. What a huge point this will be. When you are struggling for form, you'll take any late point you can get to give you something rather than nothing. A huge, huge goal by Murray Davison, and I'm delighted we get ourselves a draw in this game. Oh my word, what a huge moment. And look at these stats at full time. We did not deserve to get anything from this game. It was all Norwich. You know, it was all Norwich throughout this game. You'll see on the highlights as well. They were so much better than us, but a huge, huge goal from the captain there, stepping up big and putting the team on his shoulder and saying, listen, guys, I've got this. Massive, massive draw for us. We'll take the point, and that's a really important one. And that will end today's episode of Club and Country as well, guys. So a massive thank you for watching. I really hope you have enjoyed it. If you have enjoyed today's episode of Club, and country then please do leave a like as likes are of course very much appreciated and they really help channel grow as well just 13 games to go in the season and we are 11 points clear of the drop zone as well is it now time to pull away let's hope so as we try and secure our safety in the premier league so a big thank you for watching this episode much love to you all have a great weekend everyone and i'll see you for the next episode of club and country very soon